So starting September 2022, there have been some significant updates to the Spousal Sponsorship Program for Canada. Number one, it's now completely online. Number two, some forms have been updated. And finally, the signature requirements have been updated. Okay, so all the updated instructions for Spousal Sponsorship are in this guide 5289, which you can see on the screen here. And I'm going to link it in the description below. And as you can see right here, you now need to apply online, says in bold, all right? So you'll find all the instructions here. And if I scroll down here, under the complete the application section scrolling down further you can locate the permanent resident online portal so you're going to click this link and you will get to the permanent resident online portal where you will now submit your application remember no more paper based applications it has to be done through this online portal so this is the PR portal where you will submit the application and if you scroll down this is where you will create your account and you will submit the application through that account. So once you sign into the online portal, this is what it's going to look like. So you're gonna scroll down and you are going to click on start new application. And on the next page, you are going to select your program. So let's select family, then category. So you can select spouse because we are talking about spousal sponsorship. And then under class, there are two classes to choose from. If you, the principal applicant and the sponsor are inside Canada and you're applying for spousal sponsorship from inside Canada, meaning an inland application, then you should select this class. If the principal applicant is outside of Canada, meaning you're applying from outside of Canada for spousal sponsorship, then you can select the outside Canada class, all right? And then you can name the application how you like. So I'm simply going to keep this name, Apurva Mishra PR Sponsorship, just to make it clear, all right? And then once you hit continue, you'll get to this page. This is where you upload all your PDF forms and complete all your digital forms and then you get to the supporting documents section this is where you upload all your documents in their respective categories then you upload your payment receipt this is where you provide the consent so under consent you have to type the principal applicant's name the person being sponsored then this submit button is going to become green that means you can submit the application so before we get into the list of forms Always check the guide 5289 to be sure about which forms you have to submit and which forms have been updated. The latest versions of every form will be posted on the guide 5289. So if I can take you back to this page real quick, under the complete the application section of this guide 5289, you will see the forms and the instructions for those forms and all the updates that have been made recently. So let's actually make this easy. I actually created a table for you with the list of all the spousal sponsorship forms that are pretty much common to every application. The method of application, whether they need validation, whether a signature is required, and if it's required, whether it's a digital or hand signature, who should sign it, and what kind of a form that is, okay? So most of these forms will apply to pretty much every spousal sponsorship application, and that's why I've written mandatory next to these forms. Wherever I've written applicable, that means that the submission of this form is subjective to your specific condition. So for example, if you're not using any representative, you don't need to submit 5476. That's why it's written if applicable. Also 5562, which is a country specific form, only needs to be submitted by certain candidates of certain countries. So definitely check your guide 5289 and your country specific requirements to make sure that you are submitting all the required forms. So real quick, go back to this page 5289 and if you scroll down under document checklist and country specific requirements this is where you enter the details about what kind of sponsorship you are doing which country the applicant resides in and does the applicant need to provide other forms and documents from that country and once you click on get checklist and forms after making your selections you will get the documents and forms that are specific to your country but the forms that are in this table most of them will still apply to every spousal sponsorship application so based on the most recent updates we are going to discuss the signature requirements of these forms one by one. And by the way, this table is linked in the description below. So look for something that says Spousal Sponsorship Forms 2022. Once you click that link, it should be a Notion template. It will take you to this page. You can use it for yourself or you can share it with your friends. So again, it's linked in the description below, all right? All right, so let's look at the first one, 1344. This is a sponsorship agreement form, which is mandatory, meaning you have to submit this for your spousal sponsorship application. So the method will obviously be online. You will need to validate this, meaning you will have to click on a validate button to generate barcodes. That completes the form. Signature, so now the signature requirements for this form have changed. Now you have to sign it digitally, meaning you have to type your full name in the boxes provided to complete the digital signature. So who should sign it? So the sponsor and the principal applicant should both type their names in this form 
to complete the digital signature. Only one form, not two separate forms for applicant and sponsor. Just one form, both will sign in the same form and it's a PDF downloadable form. So I've already downloaded this form. This is what it looks like. And as you can see here, the date, it says 9-2022, meaning September 2022. So this form has been updated as of September 2022, all right? So make sure that if you're submitting your application after September 2022, this is the version that you're using, 9-2022, all right? And obviously, if they update this form further to 10-2022, 11-2022, or let's say 2023, then you have to use those versions. So if I scroll down all the way, this is the section that has been updated. So in the signature section, this line, I agree that by typing in my name, I am electronically signing my application. This did not used to exist in the previous version. So you had to finish this form, validate it, generate barcodes, print this out, hand sign it, and then scan it back. But now, based on the updated instructions, they are not expecting you to print this out and sign and scan it. Instead, simply typing your name in these boxes provided completes the digital signature. In fact, if you don't type your name here, it won't even let you validate, all right? So this section, the sponsor signature, is where the sponsor's full name has to be typed. So let's take my example. I sponsored my wife. She was the principal applicant. I'm the sponsor. So this is where I will type my full name exactly as it appears in my passport. And in this section, signature of the sponsored person, this is where you type the full name of the principal applicant. So I sponsored my wife. That makes her the principal applicant. So she would type in full name of my wife here. And then here you can simply use these drop down boxes to select the current date or you can simply type the date. And now that the electronic signatures are given here by both the sponsor and the principal applicant, you can hit the validate button and then this form, assuming that all the other fields are complete, is going to generate barcodes and that would complete the form. For spousal sponsorship, you don't have to worry about co-signer, so you can leave it blank, all right? Just worry about the sponsor and the principal applicant, all right? So now, once you've completed the form, you have validated it, you have done your digital signatures, here's the question. Do you still need to print this and hand sign it? I don't think you have to do it anymore. Let me explain why. First of all, the instructions already tell you to digitally sign it. These instructions were not there before. So these instructions have been intentionally updated because IRCC realized that previously the instructions were misleading, so they fixed it. So now they are expecting you to digitally sign it. They are not expecting you to print and hand sign this form 1344. All right, another proof, if you download the latest document checklist 5533, the latest one, again from the guide 5289, this is the document checklist. And if I scroll down under the 1344 section in the document checklist, it still says a PDF of the completed and digitally signed original document must be uploaded to your online application. So it's not saying that you have to hand sign this 1344. It clearly says digital signature here. It clearly says digital signature on the form 1344, and it clearly says digital signature in the guide 5289. So you are safe to digitally sign this form. Also, a couple of people have already sent their applications with the digital signatures on 1344, and they have received acknowledgement of receipts. These are some of my subscribers who told me that they are now accepting digital signatures on 1344. So now you must be wondering why they made these updates, because they had rejected so many applications in the past year because of say, missing signatures or not providing hand signatures including myself. I think the reason is for this 1344 because it generates barcodes and barcodes helps IRCC to literally transmit information into their systems. It's basically a data entry point. So now a lot of people, when they scan and print these forms again and again to do manual signatures, they end up distorting these barcodes. Then it becomes difficult for them to use these barcodes to facilitate data entry. And that's why they are asking us not to print this and sign it so as to keep the data entry smooth and faster. All right. So once you're done with the 1344, then you log into your online portal using your account. And then in this form section that you see on the screen, locate 1344, which is right here. Simply click on upload and upload the completed 1344 here. All right, so next up is 5532, which is the relationship information. It's also a mandatory form and it doesn't really require any validation as of now. Signatures have to be provided by both the sponsor and principal applicant. And it's also a PDF downloadable form. So I've downloaded the form and this is what it looks like. You must already be familiar with this. And it requires information from both the principal applicant and the sponsor. Just one form 
information from both the principal applicant and sponsor in this one form, not separate forms, all right? Don't get confused, single form. So if you scroll down and let's look at the version, it still says February, 2021. So you remember how we saw the 1344 and it was the September 2022 version, but this form has not recently been updated. So keep this in mind, it's going to come in handy. And if I scroll down, there are a couple of signature sections in this form. So in total, this form has four signatures, two of the principal applicant and two of the sponsor. So now obviously your question, how to sign this? So again, if I take you back to this page, this is not the guide 5289, but this is the general instruction page of the online portal and the forms and documents and how you can sign them on the online portal. I'm going to link it in the description below. This has also been updated. So if I scroll down and if I go towards the form section, it clearly says for family sponsorship applications, the sponsor must digitally sign along with the principal applicant 1344. We already covered this but also 5532. You probably already know what I'm going to say. This form has not been updated to allow digital signatures. Let me show you how. So this is the sponsor signature section, all right? This is the latest version. And if I try typing in my name, let's say I try typing in Suyesh, it doesn't let me, meaning it is still blocked. I think it's a glitch at their part because they are clearly expecting us to do digital signatures but they are not updating the forms to allow us the digital signatures. And that is what is causing the confusion. So at this point, what I'm going to recommend, until this form gets updated, you can print and sign this form. Meaning you will finish this form completely. There is no barcode, so you don't have to worry about information transmission through barcodes. So just finish this form, print this out, sign it, the principal applicant, and sponsor, both will sign it at the four sections that we talked about and then scan it back and then upload it. Once this form gets updated, let's say you are watching this video in November, December or January, obviously check the guide first, the 5289 guide and make sure that this form is updated. So if the form is updated and I'm guessing they will update this soon, then you will be able to digitally sign it. Do not upload this without signatures, all right? All right, so next up is 5476 or use of a representative form. So before we begin, let me just make something really clear. If you, the principal applicant who's being sponsored by your spouse is doing the complete application yourself, meaning you're not taking any help from any representative, whether paid or unpaid, you are collecting the forms, your documents, and you're doing everything yourself, submitting the application yourself, then you're not using a representative. In this case, you don't really need this form. So you don't have to worry about this section. You can skip ahead to the next part of the video if this applies to you. For everybody else who's using a representative, meaning you've either hired a paid consultant or appointed your sponsor as your authorized representative to do the application on your behalf and to conduct business with IRCC on your behalf, to receive documents and to receive updates on your application on your behalf, then this particular section is going to apply to you. In that case, you will have to provide 5476 or use of a representative form. And that's why it says if applicable. So it doesn't really require any validation. At least the most recent version does not. And this is also a PDF downloadable form has to be uploaded in the online portal, just like 1344 and 5532 for who should sign. So this depends on who you are appointing as your representative. So let's download this latest form from this guide 5289. And this is what it's going to look like. As you can see, the version is 11, 2021, meaning it was last updated November, 2021. So let's talk about signatures. Let me give you my example. I was the sponsor of my wife, but I was also her representative. So there's a couple of sections where we had to sign in this form. Under point eight, your representative's declaration. So this is where I would sign, meaning the representative. Then if I scroll down, this is where my wife would sign because she's the applicant. And this is where I would sign again because this requires signature of spouse. So total of three signatures by two people. If let's say we had hired a paid representative, my wife would sign here, I would sign here, but then the paid representative who might be a third party would sign here. All right. Now I'm sure you must be wondering how to actually do the signatures. So if I can take you back to this guide 5289. So it clearly says if you want to appoint someone to do business with us, you must download a use of a representative form. Don't worry about this 5475. We are just talking about 5476. So you'll download and fill 5476, only one form. Again, remember not multiple forms. Then it says sign it digitally or by hand and get your immigration representative to do so also. These instructions are also updated. They were not there before, but now the instructions say you can sign it digitally or by hand. So it's up to you. It's your choice now. 
you can actually hand sign you can also actually type your full name and that should also be good according to these instructions also there is more proof about digital signatures for this form so if you get to this page how representatives can submit permanent residence applications online I'm going to link this in the description below. So this page has all the information about how you can create a portal account if you're acting as a representative and how you can submit the application. So let me scroll down further. And as you can see here, there's a section for family sponsorship applications only. So again, keep this in mind, we are talking about representatives. And this section is for representatives for family sponsorship applications only. And this section is assuming that the sponsor is acting as a representative. All right. So it says the sponsor must download and complete these forms digitally sign along with the principal applicant 1344 5532 we already covered this but 5476 is also listed here so this should be further proof that you can also digitally sign your 5476 so again let's get back to the form so let's take my example i was the sponsor but i was also the representative for my wife so in this section under representatives declaration this is where i can digitally sign it so meaning i will simply type my full name here and I will list today's date here. And if I scroll down, there is another section, signature of spouse. So because I was acting as my wife's representative, I would also sign here because I'm the spouse of my wife. So again, digital signature here also. Okay, full name exactly as it appears on my passport. And under signature of applicant, this is where my wife will type her full name to digitally sign it. Now, the instructions clearly tell you that the representative cannot sign this form on behalf of their spouse or client or whoever. So technically, if you were to abide by the instructions, the applicant has to actually sign this. Okay, the applicant has to type their full name. So what you can do is you can send this form to your spouse if you're acting as their representative and they will type their full name and send it back to you. Or you can also share your screen and get the principal applicant to type their name here also. Okay, and I know you must be wondering how are they going to know who typed the name. So don't worry about that. There are loopholes obviously if you are inclined, but we are sticking with the instructions right now. All right, so just assume my wife is typing the name here and then she can put the date when she signs the form. All right, so based on the instructions, you can save this form and you can simply upload this in the online portal in the form section under 5476. Now, if you're still worried that digital signatures might not be enough, then what you can do is, and this is completely your choice, you can print this out and hand sign it also and then scan it and upload it. But I just showed you it's not really necessary. You are good with the digital signatures on this 5476 form as well. All right, so there is one more PDF form that you'll have to submit. It's mandatory. It's the document checklist 5533. This has also been recently updated. So make sure to download the latest document checklist based on your country specific requirements. So this is what it's going to look like. You simply have to go through these items and select the boxes that apply to you. And whatever doesn't apply, you can simply write not applicable. And then you upload this in the online portal. You don't have to sign this document checklist. That's why I've written not required, All right? Now let's look at the digital forms. So 0008, 5669, 5562 and 5406. These forms are digital, meaning there's no PDF, no barcode, no validation they have to be filled inside the online portal. That's why I've written digital filled inside the online portal. You don't have to worry about signature with these forms because simply typing in the applicant's full name in the consent section completes the digital signature for these forms. So you'll come back to the online portal and in the form section, you'll locate these digital forms. So this is the form 0008. You'll click on start and you'll finish the form right here. Basically provide information through this portal. Same thing, you're going to do this for this form 5406, which is the family information form. As you can see, it says mandatory. Then you're gonna do the same thing for 5669, which is schedule A. This is also mandatory. And this form also has a consent section inside it. So make sure to finish that consent section, meaning typing the principal applicant's name. Otherwise, it won't let you finish the form. So next up is 5562, supplementary information. As you can see, this form is not mandatory. So if this applies to you, then you'll click on start and finish this form. Otherwise, you can simply leave it blank. How do you know if this applies to you? Go back to your guide 5289, click on step one, get your application kit, click on get your application package, answer these questions, and then based on your selection, you will know whether you require 5562 or not.
All right. And then once you've completed these forms and uploaded all the PDF forms that we talked about, this is where you will upload all your supporting documents. So all your travel documents, proof of relationship documents, your status documents, your letter of explanations, what have you, everything that you need to provide support for your relationship and your sponsorship application, you will upload it here. This is a very critical section and a lot of applications get returned because people fail to provide enough documents. So I've covered all the supporting documents that I provided for my wife's sponsorship application in this video that should be showing up on the cards here and it's linked in the description below. It will be a highly beneficial video to watch. So it's linked below, definitely check that out. Once you've uploaded all the forms, documents, payment receipt, given the consent, then this button is going to become green and then you can submit your application, all right? So obviously this spousal sponsorship process is a huge work in progress, but the good news is IRCC seems to have realized that the online way or the digital way is a much better way to do the application. So expect more updates in the next couple of months as we move into 2023 for better and efficient ways of doing this online application. So the forms that have not yet been updated might get updated really soon. So keep checking the guide 5289. And also there are some wonderful Facebook groups that you can check for spousal sponsorship where people share useful information. So continue to be vigilant, keep your research on, keep checking the guide 5289, keep talking to people on Facebook groups, and also keep posting your comments and feedback in the comment section below so that I can make videos about these updates in the next coming months. That's it for this video. My name is Suyash. This is Hit Submit in Canada. I'll catch you in the next one. Good night.